It seems that every year, every single tech YouTuber releases a video about whether or not core count is important for gaming in that year. So I decided to do my own tests, and it seems that it doesn't matter, it's not important, unless you have one specific configuration, which means it is important. So yeah, it, it, it does matter in 2019. The reason that I actually wanted to do this video is because I recently did another video where I was testing a Vega Frontier Edition versus a GTX 1080. And in that video, I used an i5 7600K overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz for all of the testing. And then when I was finished with that video, I took the GTX 1080 out of the PC, I put a water block on it, and I put it back in my main editing PC, which has a Ryzen 7 1700X. So it's one of the first generation Ryzen CPUs. And the first thing that I noticed was, well, it felt a lot smoother on the Ryzen system, especially the 0.1% lows, so the actual dips in frame rate felt a lot less drastic than it did on the Intel system which I found really weird because the Intel system was overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz, whereas the Ryzen system, I usually run at around 3.9 gigahertz. So it's a lower core speed and it's supposedly a CPU that's worse at gaming than the Intel alternative. So is 2019 finally the year that the unhyperthreaded quad core CPU becomes obsolete? Well, let's do some testing to find out. Now, how I'm going to go about doing the testing today is I'm going to take the same Ryzen 7 1700X CPU for all of the tests, and then I'm going to use Ryzen Master and the BIOS to switch off hyper-threading and cores for the various test configurations that I want to do for the video. Now, I think this is a really good way of testing it because I'm using the same CPU for all of the tests. It means that the only variable is the actual core count that I have active for the specific test. Now, the configurations that I'm going to test today is eight cores with hyperthreading on, so that's eight cores and 16 threads, and then we're going to test just eight cores without hyperthreading on, and then we're going to do six cores, 12 threads, and then just six cores, and then four cores, eight threads, and then just four cores, so that we can see if there's an actual drop in performance as you go down the core count. Now, one of the reasons that I think this is a very relevant question is because all of these configurations are are ways in which manufacturers separate their various CPUs from each other. Now let's have a look at the games that I'm going to be testing in these various configurations. Now I obviously have to test games that were released in 2019, otherwise there's no point in doing a core count in 2019 video if I'm testing a bunch of games that were released in 2017. So the first game that I decided to do was Apex Legends, which don't actually know if that was released in 2019. Let me just quickly check. Apex Legends. 2019, we're good. And then the second game that we're gonna do is Resident Evil 2, which has been very well received by people. That was also released in 2019. The other game is gonna be Anthem, which is, I, I don't know how many of you are actually playing Anthem because I don't think it's a very good game, but I actually, there was a little bit of a snag with the testing, but we'll get into that later. And then the final game is Battlefield 5. Now I know that Battlefield 5 was technically released in the end of 2018, but the end of 2019, I mean 18, is pretty much 2019, so hopefully you'll let that slide. Now unfortunately, I am only testing four games for this video, which is quite disappointing, but honestly, Actually doing these benchmarks took me super long because of system instability and how weird the Ryzen Master software was with turning cores off and then nothing works and then you just have to, it was, it was a bit of a nightmare. But I know that four games is just kind of not as good as hardware unboxed, for example. They're probably gonna be really disappointed in the fact that I don't at least have 37 games in this test lineup. So Steve, I failed you, I'm sorry. And now before we get into the actual benchmarks, let's just do a quick rundown of the system that I used for these tests. Uh, as far as RAM goes, I have 16 gigs of DOM plats in this system. It's DDR4 3000 speed. And then I used the GTX 1080, which was liquid cooled and it wasn't manually overclocked. It was just kind of left to do its own thing. And then the CPU was overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz for all of the tests. So there was an exact core speed running for all of the configurations. And then when it comes to the games. I tested them all at 1080p resolution at ultra settings. And now with all of the boring stuff out of the way, let's have a look at the actual benchmarks. Oh. 
Oh, it's not looking great for the quad core. Okay, so if you play only Apex Legends, it doesn't make a huge difference. There is a bit of a dip when it comes to the 0.1% lows. But the thing is, it doesn't dip below 60 frames per second yet, so it shouldn't be much of an issue. But honestly, I have to say that from my subjective gaming experience, Apex Legends did feel different. Now, things aren't looking good for the quad core when you take Battlefield 5 into account, because especially when you turn hyper-threading off on the four core configuration, the average frame rate drops quite a lot. And one of the things that drops the most is the 0.1% minimum, which is more important, in my opinion, for general gaming experience. But what this means is that if you have an i7 from that generation, you should be fine, but the 7600K and the 6600K and the, all the previous generations of i5s are starting to get a bit long in the tooth. When moving on to Anthem, this was really infuriating because nothing I could do could get the test set up to run at four cores, no hyper-threading. It worked with all of the rest of them, no problem at all. But the moment that I tried the four core configuration, it just didn't work. And I tried for hours to get it running. And I actually tried again the next day and I just couldn't get that configuration to work, which is really infuriating because that's one of the most important results, in my opinion, for this test. But there does seem to be a very neat downwards trend in Anthem as you slowly turn cores off and go down the setup. Um, but yeah, that's a really big issue with this test is that I couldn't get the four core set up to work. When looking at Resident Evil 2, it doesn't make a huge difference. When you have the only quad core setup, then your 0.1% minimum drops quite a bit, but it's not substantial and it barely drops below 60 frames per second, so you shouldn't feel it. Honestly, I couldn't really feel it while doing the testing. So in conclusion, what do these tests tell us about the importance of core count in 2019? Well, honestly, it doesn't seem to matter massively unless you go below four cores and eight threads. So if you have an older generation i5, now may be a good time to start thinking about upgrading, especially with the up and coming release of the new Ryzen CPUs, they may be a good bet for most of us. And then what these tests tell us in the way of which CPUs we should buy, don't buy into the more expensive CPUs in the lineup because it seems that for gaming the extra cores and threads don't necessarily make sense. So for example if you compare the i9-9900K versus the 9700K the extra money you're spending for the i9 is not really going to do anything for your gaming performance and you can actually spend it on a better graphics card or more RGB swag or whatever it is that you want to spend your money on. And then when it comes to what Ryzen CPUs to buy if all you're doing is gaming a Ryzen 5 is a really good bet at the moment. Although, I wouldn't necessarily buy a CPU right now because we're just around the corner from the 7 nanometer Ryzen CPU release and if they're awesome, it means that we have an awesome CPU to buy and then if they're lame, we can buy something else. But one thing that we know now is that we shouldn't necessarily fall into the marketing trap of buying the highest core count CPU we can get our hands on. And with that, it brings me to the end of this video. If you like the video, do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. I have an Instagram and a Twitter feed, so you can go check those out to see if there's anything interesting there for you. And yeah, I think until the next video, have a good one. Bye-bye. Have a good one? I've never said that. Bye-bye.